All right, what's going on, y'all? John Corky here, 80 Kilo Strongman out of New England, Massachusetts. This is kind of one of my first videos I'm doing in this type of fashion, so hopefully it goes over well. Um, basically, what we're going to be going over is I'm going to be trying to break down the log in a way that for you new strongman, and hey, you never know, you experienced strongman can see things in a different light and hopefully you know, gain some knowledge out of this, but I'm just going to share what I know. By all means, down in the comments, let me know whether I did well, did bad, what you'd like to see different. Don't at me about the video quality. I understand that it looks like it was filmed with a potato, but that's kind of what happened when uh, transferring from phone to phone to my computer. So I'm going to do the best I can with what we got. All right, before we jump into this, quick little background info. During this uh, log, it's a 225 log. It's not that uh, it's not that heavy, so the weight doesn't matter. What we care about is the positioning and mechanics that are going inside this lift. This was from a recent competition I did with Rhode Island during Northeast Strongest State. And, um, yeah, let's jump into it, huh? So we'll just go ahead. We'll stop inside this position here. Um, I understand everybody's starting positions a little different, but this is what I like to do. Now, with the different logs that are out there, you have Rogue, you have Titan, um, you have Slater logs like we're like we're looking at right here. Your handles, in terms of width, depth, and um, overall general thickness of the of the handles on the inside, vary, right? So on this one, it's a very narrow grip all around. So you don't have much leeway, and the handles are are deep enough to the point that. Um, I like to start with my log in a very forward position. However, on this, I could not do that, so therefore I had to lean it back towards my, uh, towards myself a little bit more. But with that being said, everything else remains the same, right? So we're, I like to go ahead. I like to start in a decently wide stance, um, a little bit, little bit greater than shoulder width with my feet pointed out towards a 45-degree angle. I know it's kind of hidden by the, uh, by the pads. Again... Log in the forward position, and then uh, it's essentially just a deadlift from there or an RDL, depending on how tall you are. So here we go. Now, real quick, I'm just going gonna, gonna to bring this back for you. Inside, inside the, the pick, right? Uh, at the top end of the pick, I know I kind of go through it a little fast. Uh, because I'm used to it, but when I'm training people or when I'm trying to get them to get a proper pick or, and get into the uh, position, the seated position a little easier, I like to tell them to come to a full extension position, shrug your shoulders up nice and high so that, that way the log is inside your hips or the log is resting up on your hips. So that way when you sit down, as you see when I press play, the log is in my lap in the proper position. Okay. So, here, this is before I get completely seated, right, in, inside the log, but this, this demonstrates because I go through the movement rather quickly. Again, I've been doing it, I've been doing it a lot, and I, I'm someone who hammers the form down pretty hard, so with, with this, I'm trying to slow it down and give you the most advantageous angles to explain what I'm talking about. So, inside this seated angle, as you can see here, what a lot of people tend to do is they tend to crank their elbows down, right? They tend to crank their elbows down and be seat and have that log facing them. This makes it really hard to, to clean the log and it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause a lot of drop when you go to stand up with the log and it's going to cause a lot of strain on your biceps because a lot of people think of the log is a power clean when it's not, right? So inside this seated position here, you want the log essentially where we have it. And if you're a little guy, this is going to be extremely extremely uh, important for yourself as you need that log as high, almost as high up on your torso as you can. Because the more travel time you have, the, the less power you're going to have inside your clean. And when you get to heavier weights, it's going to become extremely, extremely hard. All right. So with this, you got the log inside your hips. Inside, uh, while I'm in this seated position, before I go to stand up, I am, uh, if you notice, my elbows are at a 90 degree angle, right? My hands are down, my elbows are up at a 90. Apparently I'm a little crooked, according to my camera. All right. Now what this is going to do is, like I said, uh, moving into it, everyone, well not everyone, but a lot of people tend to think that the log is a power clean. 
and they get it to their hips and they try and sling their hips up in this position. Not the way I like to teach it. The way I like to teach it is from that 90 degree angle, as soon as you're standing up, you're, you're flexing your glutes, you're driving your hips through as you're about to see. And those elbows, instead of being down here, the reason why they're up here is because we're squeezing our elbows together as we're leaning back. And that is going to cause the log to roll. Also, why we're pulling it into our body is because if we drop, if that log drops, right? The more it drops, the more my elbows drop, and the more it becomes that awful power clean that we're talking about for the log. The higher we can keep it and the higher we can keep our elbows inside that 90, we can squeeze, and that, that log will rotate right up onto your chest, as you can see here. Rhode Island! All right. So I'll back it up a little bit. We'll do it again. Okay. So, breaking it down frame by frame as we go, right? The hips are coming through. As soon as I go to stand up, the hips are coming through. We want that log to drop. We don't, uh, ideally, we don't want that log to drop into our, down to our hips anymore as soon as we go to stand up, right? Because, again, we start losing that tension that we've built. So, we keep that log pulled in nice and tight to our chest, right? Moving forward. As you see, the hips are driving and my elbows are being driven down and squeezed together. Squeezing, 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 squeezing. And then we get into that nice, tight, high rack position, right? Okay, so then we end up here. We are now at the top of our log. And we have expended very, not very little energy because depending on the weight that you're doing, you're expending energy no matter what. But we have now made a very inefficient movement efficient. We have more energy at the top. We put, we managed to get the log up into our tight rack position. And then now we can prepare for our press. Okay. Inside this position, I know um, a lot of people tend to get a little hasty, a little excited because like, oh man, I got this log up. All right, now I need to get it over my head. Relax, okay? So I like, to, I like to consider three bracing points for myself. I brace when I go to pick up the log. I brace inside that seated position. Well, I brace when I get the log, when I pick it. I rebrace in the seated position so that I can clean. Then when I'm at the top again, I like to rebrace and get ready for my press. Now, when I go to get into this press, I am a huge um, split jerker because I have a decent Olympic background, uh, Olympic lifting background. So we can go we can go into that a little a little later, okay? Uh, but for all intents and purposes, this is a log clean video, so we will stick it to the clean, and then I'll finish I'll finish the lift. But getting back to this position here, right? So as soon as we get up. For you little guys that have big shoulders or anybody really that has big shoulders, um, I know us strongmen, we don't like to train chest too much because we don't really do bench press inside strongman competitions. But an issue I run into myself is that when I get up into this high rack position, what ends up happening is the log rests across my shoulders and it doesn't have any impact here on my chest or it doesn't have any surface on my chest. This is going to take a lot of power away from your press when you go to dip into it. So when you're in this position, you, if you, you need a decent, a well, little bit of thoracic mobility. So that way you can, as you see in my video, I am leaning back with the log. I am not standing straight up. Okay. You want to have that, that decent amount of lean in your log for that log to sit nice on top of your chest, on your delts, and then that way you can load your lats and get ready for your press. Because if you're going to stay, and also when you go and get ready for your dip, okay, if, if anything about this is off, if you have, if you have a loose rack position, um, if that law, if you're standing straight up, what's going to happen is you're going to dip down. And because the log is so big and it's a little different than a barbell, that log is going to drop and you're going to lose power production as you go to stand up. 
So we keep that nice tight rack position with a little bit of lean, right? And then as we go forward, when we go to dip down into our press, if you notice, okay, if you notice on my dip, my knees are bent, but I am not bending forward into my knees. I still have a generally straight, uh, generally straight position from, from my back to my hips, okay? If we come forward, all right, we're going to be losing power because we want to generate force up. So, and also if you come forward, that log does tend to dip a little bit. So we want to keep that nice thoracic position. We want to dip down straight. You want to try and keep your hips straight. This can be practiced a lot inside a front squat position or front squat position, a front squat exercise. And then um, this will eventually transfer over to the log. You just, big thing to remember is that you do have to um, keep that slight amount of lean to avoid that log dipping forward. All right. And then uh, breaking it down frame by frame, still coming down, still coming down, dipping a little more. And then right here. Okay. So as you're, I'm just going to play it through. You're going to see that I am split jerking the log. Now there's, there's all different ways you can do it. You see everybody do it in different ways, depending on their mobility, their lifting background or whatever type of background they have. So again, I said, I'm a big Olympic lifter. Therefore I like to split jerk my log and my axle. I will push jerk if it's, uh, if it's in a competition for say like, uh, as many reps as possible or something like that to be a little bit more efficient. And, um, you see some people who strict press because, um, those other two movements are a little bit complicated or actually the more prominent one you see is a lot of push pressing, which is very good. But with push pressing, push jerking, um, I like to focus on this basic cue. As soon as you reach the bottom of your dip, start pressing as soon as you're coming up. A lot of people, especially in push pressing, you see it a lot, they tend to stand up, their knees straighten, and then they start to press. And they lose all that power and momentum that they lost as soon as they stop, or that they gained coming up as soon as they stop, right? So simple cue. As soon as you're about to come up, start pressing. And then we'll finish it out here with the with the split jerk and you'll get to kind of see it. If you want to go over a split jerk in another video, split jerk, a push jerk, uh, push press timing, you know, whatever, put it in the comments and I'll make another video. All right. And there you go. That was a split jerk with, uh, with a log. Again, my name is John Corky. If you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, please, by all means, leave me some feedback in the comments. Let me know something else that you want to see. Um, I am starting to do individuals uh, in an online and in-person fashion. So, excuse me, if you, uh, if you want to hit me up on Instagram or anything like that, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll post it inside the comments for, for you guys. And again, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned something. So let's get strong, but let's get strong and do it right out there. Have a great night.